and he said, I'm telling you I'm going to kill you if you don't move out of the way. Carjacked at gunpoint amid chaos in Commerce City. I was so shaken up, I didn't really know what was going on. A driver unnerved after a heart pounding encounter with a suspected moving truck thief. Questioning those in charge of donations. Nonprofits raised millions in the wake of the Boulder shooting and why some families now want to see better oversight. I hear the prop planes, the turbo planes. Peace and quiet, hard to come by in one neighborhood. You know, like a lawnmower outside of my window. A soaring demand for flight lessons, unsettling some neighbors. Tonight, they're asking for change. Until you admit that there is a problem, you can't start to find a solution. The thief who took off in this moving truck caused chaos across the metro on Monday. And tonight, we are learning about yet another person heard by it all. It's the second Penske moving truck stolen near DIA in less than a week. For two families moving to Colorado, it created a massive headache. Thanks to police, Denver 7 viewers, and social media tips, both those families now have most of their stuff back. And that's not where the story ends. We are now hearing from the owner of this car, who says in the middle of all that confusion, she was carjacked. Good evening and welcome to Denver 7 News at 10. I'm Shannon Ogden. And I'm Jessica Porter. Thank you for joining us. Tonight, that driver is badly shaken. As Denver 7's Eddie Guajardo reports, two days after being forced out of her car at gunpoint, one woman still can't shake the sense of unease. The sight of a 26-foot Penske truck on fire gripped the attention of drivers on I-270 at Vasquez Boulevard in Commerce City Monday night. A uh, huge fire on the other side. Candace Morell got caught in traffic as police assessed the scene. She was sitting in her car when a man ran towards her. I thought maybe he was hurt. Wanting to help, she rolled down her window. He started tapping my windshield with a, a rifle. And demanded she get out. Grabbed my arm with his hand and the rifle was underneath it. And he said, I'm telling you I'm going to kill you if you don't move out of the way. Um, and then he said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Move. She was carjacked, leaving her stranded on the highway. Surveillance cameras caught the moment the driver crashed and police surrounded the car off Alameda Avenue and Potomac Street in Aurora. When you look at this photo right here, is that him? Yes. Yeah, that's him. 33 year old Timothy Sutton. He was arrested by Aurora police. Officials say he was also involved in the Penske truck theft. Candace says this man stole her sense of peace in less than a minute. He completely rocked my world. As she stood paralyzed with terror, incoherent to his demands. I still feel like I'm processing it. It still doesn't feel real. It still doesn't. I still don't feel safe. She estimates the damage to her car in the thousands. Getting it out of impound and seeing it busted up and I'm a single mom, I work really hard. <laughs> Candace always looks at the bright side of life, but right now it's hard to get past the nightmare and the sleepless nights. And I hope he goes to jail for a long time or long enough to reflect. For now, there are too many triggers in Denver. That's why she escaped to Greeley for a few days. Addie Guardo, Denver 7. Terrifying. And for some perspective for you, we dug into some of the crime numbers in Denver. We looked at car thefts in the city for the first five months of this year compared to last year. That number more than doubled. So by this time in 2020, there were just over 2,300 car thefts. Year to date, this year, already above 4,800. As for the hot spots, we found Central Park, Hamden, and Five Points neighborhoods topped the list. In Central Park alone, more than 240 car thefts reported just this year. Some of the families and friends of those killed in the Boulder King Super shooting are demanding changes on how public donations are handled. In the wake of the attack that killed 10 people, both the Colorado Healing Fund and Community Foundation Boulder County stepped in to raise money for families. Together, they've raised close to $6 million so far. Stand Up Boulder says the nonprofits are not being transparent about how they are handling the money. It wants to appoint a third party to oversee spending. Community Foundation Boulder County and the Colorado Healing Fund both defend their work and say third party oversight is not needed. And taking a deeper look at mass shootings in our country, there's a new report from the FBI that shows Colorado 
has seen more than its fair share. The FBI released a review of what it calls active shooter incidents from the last 20 years. Now that is defined as somebody attempting to kill others in a developed populated area. It says Colorado had 13 attacks in that time, so that places us seventh in the nation. In all, there have been 333 active shooter attacks in the U.S. since 2000. On average, the number happening each year is trending up. 2017 to 19 saw the greatest number of attacks yet. A six-year-old boy is dead after a house fire in Aurora early this morning. Fire crews responded to South Paris Way near Peoria around 12.30 a.m. Firefighters used ladders to rescue the boy. He was taken to the hospital but did not survive. He has not yet been identified. Now investigators are trying to figure out what sparked the fire. Some families in Broomfield say they are fed up with noise in their neighborhood. Not road traffic, it's air traffic that's causing complaints. Neighbors say they're dealing with the noise of hundreds of flights every day. And as Denver 7 Sloan Dickey reports, they want it to change. The open space, believe it or not, the quiet. Open spaces are everywhere. I mean, just look around you, it's gorgeous. Elizabeth Heidel moved to Broomfield for the views and the quiet. I have a view, a beautiful view of the Flatirons um, and Long's Peak. But the quiet. I don't know how high above us that is, but that's about, I mean, it can't be a thousand feet. Is surprisingly hard to find. It sounds like a landscaper's lawnmower right under right next right next to you. She lives just a few miles from the Rocky Mountain Metropolitan Airport, a growing institution in a growing community with a major problem. The flight school traffic has increased. Heidel says there's little oversight. The airport is in Jefferson County, but she lives in the surrounding neighborhoods of Boulder County, making it difficult to file complaints and get answers. Several online and community groups have formed to push back against the constant drone of the airplanes. There's five, five flight schools there. There's no reason this community doesn't have, it's not serving the community to have five flight schools. It's just not. And she says it's more than just a noise problem. Just two weeks ago, a flight school plane emergency landed in a dog park in her community. I could see the rooftops of my houses in the background from my iPhone picture. Denver 7 reached out to the Rocky Mountain Metropolitan Airport for comment but did not hear back. Jefferson County has opened a monthly community roundtable to find solutions to the noise from the planes. Until you admit that there is a problem, you can't start to find a solution. She says the problems can be visualized. Over 4,000 flights in one month in April. These lines show the roughly 4,600 flights that flew over Heidel's house in one month. That's an average of about 150 a day. Heidel says she wants to find a solution. I don't want the airport to go away. I don't want our community to go away. I don't want to have to move again. I really believe that there is a, a solution. But right now, she says, it's just noise. Frustration, it's anger, it's people uh, that feel stuck and frustration. Sloan Dickey, Denver 7. And tonight, things are getting back to normal for the JBS meatpacking plant in Greeley. That company was hit by a cyber attack this week that shut down many of its North American operations yesterday. The FBI is investigating, and it says a hacking group out of Russia is responsible. And JBS produces more than one-fifth of all beef in the U.S. Cybersecurity companies say this is the biggest attack yet on a food manufacturer, and at least 40 other food companies have been targeted by hackers just in the last year. And hacking's a big concern for companies large and small. And for a deeper dive into this issue, we sat down with a cybersecurity expert here in Colorado, and I encourage you to watch this complete interview right now on the DenverChannel.com. And for more on the JBS hack and the wide-ranging effects it's having on beef supply, grocery prices, everything, switch to the Denver 7 Plus app. Search Denver 7 Plus on your Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Android device and start watching for free. Sexual assault survivors and district attorneys are sounding the alarm. They say a bill meant to renew the board that manages sex offenders is full of amendments that could harm victims. The bill's major sticking point is dealing with a huge backlog of sex offenders needing treatment programs. That's required by law for them to be released from prison. Kimberly Corbin, a survivor and advocate, told me she became concerned because earlier amendments watered down the definition of sex offenders and wouldn't have required treatment. That's been thrown out, but she She's upset the whole process was done without victim input. Corbin fought to make sure her rapist was convicted in 2006. He has 
really not accepted any responsibility for what he's done. He has not completed a day of offender treatment and it shows. If he were to be released back into our community, without a doubt, he would reoffend. And the fact that he was picked up by the police department, picking out his next victim, should speak volumes. The latest version of the bill requires the Department of Corrections and the board to come up with a solution to the backlog without changing requirements for treatment. Advocates are keeping a close eye on the bill because it continues to be amended and changed even at this late hour. And Colorado's state legislature is, is just 10 days away uh, or 10 days left in this session, and there are some important bills left on the table. Today, the House passed a major transportation overhaul. It would raise money for road projects by adding fees to gas deliveries and rideshare services. Next, it goes to the governor's desk for approval. Other things in the mix, a bill aimed at lowering health care costs by creating a Colorado specific plan. It passed the Senate and there's a bill to limit teens access to high potency pot. It would also tighten standards for receiving a medical card. That one is awaiting a vote in the Senate. Well, because of demand, DU's Latino Leadership Institute is becoming a national independent nonprofit organization. Since 2014, LLI has identified, prepared, and elevated extraordinary Latino talent to leadership positions. In fact, Denver Police Chief Paul Pazin's an alum. And today I talked with LLI's executive director. Her name's Joelle Martinez. And when I asked her why now is the time for this expansion, well, she said the turmoil of the pandemic has created this ideal opportunity. We wanted to be part of building the economy back differently, about reimagining what leadership could be as we began to build back our cities, our companies, and ultimately our country. Martinez says in the group's seven years, LLI has trained more than 250 professionals, 60 percent of whom now serve on boards. Alumni also include two local chiefs of police, city council members, and members of the state legislature. Battle at Ball Arena. The Avs eager to extend their lead against Las Vegas. We've got highlights from tonight's punishing playoff game. He scores! It's been a challenge. Uh, definitely a lot of stress, a lot of frustrations. A home swamped by sewage. And now finally things are turning around. And Denver 7 Gives viewers are making sure this family has everything they need. A nice mild evening for the Front Range tonight. Lows in the mid 50s with partly cloudy skies. But as we head toward the weekend, we have some big changes coming our way. I'll have your seven day.